Hello again and welcome back to the Brussels Signal studio. My name is Justin Stairs and we are very happy to have Tom van Grieken here today. Welcome to the studio, Mr. van Grieken. Thanks for having me. He is the leader of the Vlaams Belang, or in English, Flemish Interest. Now, um, as many of our viewers will be outside of Belgium, I should start by explaining your party. It's a, a, a Flemish party. Belgium is unusual in that most of the parties are not, in fact, national parties. It is a, a, a Flemish party, and according to the opinion polls, it is set to become the largest party in Flanders and also in Belgium. That's correct? That's correct. Right, and uh, this is significant for many reasons. Um, but before I ask that first question, I wanted to just pop in one personal question, please. How did you start out in politics? Why did you become a politician, please? Oh, I grew up in the city of Antwerp, the north of Flanders and the north of Belgium, in a very multicultural area. I went to school and uh, I had some very left-wing teachers and they said everybody could be proud of their identity, proud to be Turkish, proud to be Moroccan, proud to be uh, Pakistani. And when you said I'm proud to be Flemish, it was something <gasps> something you know, right-wing or something dirty. You can compare it like in England, you can be proud to be Scottish, but saying proud to be English, then you're a right-wing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was this, it's that aspect. And the multicultural dream was perfect, you couldn't criticize it. And back then, 2002, 2003, there was a party, Flemish Interest, uh, who was the only party who was saying, yes, uh, multiculturalism has some advantages, but also some disadvantages, we should talk about that. And because we believe we are a Flemish nation, we, with the Flemish tradition, Flemish history, Flemish culture, we have the right of our own state. And for me, it was one-on-one, -on -one, so I joined the party. Okay, now that brings me to the first question then. Obviously, Flemish interest, is it fair to describe a Flemish interest as a right-wing, hard-right party? How would you describe it? What it considers on which topics? Uh, I would say we're quite a conservative party concerning ethical topics. We we're right-wing concerning migration topics, concerning social economic topics. Then we're not right-wing in a liberal sense, but we are more center. We believe in free markets. We believe in competition, uh, not too much taxes, but we want also uh, some uh, social support for the people who, are, who fell out of the system. Okay, now one of the important elements of your party's political position is that you do not believe in Belgium. In fact, you were in favor of the dissolution of Belgium and the setting up of a Flemish nation, correct? Correct. Now, is this going to happen? I ask because I've been here writing about a bit about Belgium, uh, mostly about the European Union, but I try to write about Belgium and the end of Belgium is one of those recurring articles which foreign correspondents write. Um, is it going to happen? Is the end of Belgium nigh? And if so, how long has Belgium got left, do you uh, think? I think the answer is yes, it will happen. But when, that we cannot predict. Um, why I'm quite sure it will happen. Uh, because since the creation of Belgium, which is an artificial state, uh, since then there's only uh, an evolution of dissolvement of uh, the Belgium state. Once it was a, a unitarian state, now it's a federal state. You feel the evolution going on to going our own directions. So, you know, in your introduction, which I uh, heard quite clear, you said uh, there are no national parties, but there were once, also there are already separate. Even the Red Cross is separate right. in this country. Uh, so everything is the natural evolution of things. But the final stage, the, the split of the country, mm. um, there is a big possibility next elections because... Um, you'll see um, an evolution as well. The three traditional parties who are state-carrying, I think that's the correct word, are the socialists, the Christian Democrats and the liberals. They're losing votes after votes. In the 60s, they had 90% of the votes. And now they are fighting together for 30%. And the Flemish nationalist votes, there are two big parties, Flemish Interest and the MVA, um, they're gaining votes. And we're approximately around 50%. Mm. So it could be very interesting next election. Very interesting indeed. Now, I mean, for example, if the Flemish nationalists have more than 50% in the Flemish parliament, you could call... Uh, for a, a vote of independence. It has happened once before. There was one, at least one vote before that failed, right? No, we never had to, went to vote. Yeah, there was once in history, 1917, there was something which was not comparable. Now we have our own, own uh, parliament, the Flemish parliament, 
and it is theoretically possible to do so. We have a different plan. Our plan is not to start with the declaration of independence, but a declaration of sovereignty, where we say the Flemish parliament is sovereign every decision it makes. And we start negotiations with Wallonia. We'll give it uh, like five years or something, uh, and we start to find a, a, a document how to split up the country. And that should end in a declaration of independence. So no chaos, no strange things, but everything uh, within an international framework uh, and orderly split up. That's what we think is best. Because all the rest is already tried. We can be quite honest about it, although I'm a, I'm a Flemish nationalist, there are only three options. To make everything more national, nobody's in favor of that. Everything Once it's split up, it never comes together. You mean back to unitary Belgium, right. Okay. Uh, there's a, a there's no going back. No, no, nobody is in favor of that. They can say it in front of the cameras, but if they're honest, no. Then we have the status quo, what we have now. Everybody agrees if something should change. And then you have the degrees how much the two different regions should become uh, more sovereign or more independent. And uh, we're quite uh, consequent. In what should we keep together? The Belgium army, it doesn't impress <laughs> the world very much. So then we think we can easily split up and be good neighbors instead of uh, family who fights all the time. And that's interesting. So a vote of sovereignty followed by negotiations with the Walloons and the Brussels government as well, I presume. Well, how no. does Brussels ah how does um, Brussels fit into this? If you could see a map, you will see that Brussels in the center of Flanders, surrounded by Flanders. The capital of Flanders is Brussels. The capital of Wallonia is uh, Namur. Um, we're quite well aware there's now a, a Brussels identity. Uh, demographic of Brussels is also not very Flemish anymore. <laughs> On the other hand, if you go to Paris, it doesn't feel very French as well. But no Frenchman will say, we'll leave Paris. Uh, there will always be some conflict between the capital and the rest of the country. The same for the UK, London and the rest of uh, the UK is also a bit tense. Um, so we uh, agree, we, we say Brussels is the capital of Flanders with respect for the French uh, uh, population. They will have uh, uh, special rights so they can keep talking French in our capital. So we say the Republic of Flanders is Dutch, but the capital will be bilingual French-Dutch. So that includes Brussels, essentially. Yes. Okay, so you won't negotiate with the Brussels authorities on the future or the dissolution of Belgium. Is that the way it will work? We have now in the, in the, in the Constitution, they have a, a, a separate uh, status. Uh, so they will have something to say, which is quite democratic as well, but they also have a few options. First, it can be what in Belgium, only Belgians believe that, it can be a Washington DC of the European Union. Right. Of course, it's a big joke, <laughs> the European Union having uh, 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 territory really that will not never work, never an option. Then they uh, could join Wallonia. But they're, yeah, it's run by socialists, they're bankrupt, Brussels is also not in the best shape. Yeah, they will not, uh, no, no, traf no uh, public transport will work, it will be a failed uh, state. And become independent as Brussels, which they think it's a possibility, but also financially they cannot do it. So we have an, a nice offer. We Flemish are 60% of the population, we are 70% of the tax we pay, 85% 85, uh, 85 of the export is Flemish. So we can support uh, the financial um, questions that Brussels has. So it's a quite nice offer. Uh, we stay together, Brussels and Flanders. You're the capital with respect for the rights of the French-speaking people. Okay, that's interesting. Is that also the position of the new Flemish alliance, the other nationalist no, party? Uh, as long as Belgium exists and the Flemish movement exists, there are two, two ways of independence. We don't believe you can achieve it within Belgium structure. And they believe they can do it within... This Belgium. is the confederalism yes. idea. Uh, so, uh, I must say, uh, of course, I believe every time there is a reform of Belgium, we lose territory. Once, uh, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, Brussels was quite Flemish. We lost it. Uh, we lost territory to Wallonia. Uh, and also with a high price, uh, we pay each Flemish person pays 2,500 euros each year to the south of the country. So it's a high price concerning territory, high price concerning uh, financial uh, aspects. So we don't believe in that way of dissolving Belgium. But of course, it's the voters who have the last word, which is the best strategy. Interesting, because the socialists in Wallonia have not been against the devolution, have they? In fact, they've agreed to every step of, yes. of the process. 
And I'm wondering, you hear rumours about, obviously, there were rumours about a new, new state reform, and the socialists always seem to be in favour of it. Do you think they would be actually in favour of the dissolution of Belgium if you start these talks after uh, the... Uh, for the dissolution of Belgium, um, there will there was a famous uh, socialist uh, leader, as Onkelings, uh, she was a qu quite an uh, aggressive lady, and uh, they say the love of Belgium... Uh, exist as long as the Flemish keep paying. <laughs> so you can agree with a socialist, like in every other socialist in the world, if you put money bags on the table. When that ends, uh, the deal ends for them as well. And as long as uh, uh, Flanders is uh, wealthy, they will keep uh, Belgium together. They will be in favor of more autonomy, but it comes with a high price. And we're fed up with that. We don't want to pay for a right to govern ourselves. Right, okay. And if uh, Belgium splits, what do you think Wallonia will do? You were talking about the financial problems. What, they'll join France or continue, struggle on? I'm afraid nobody wants Wallonia. It's like uh, the last communist socialist state in Western Europe. They're bankrupt. Uh, so I think that's a problem for them. And therefore, I think we should not be uh, as social. Uh, there should be some solidarity. Uh, no nation uh, benefits with a uh, uh, neighbor country, neighbor who is in difficulties. So I think there should be some solidarity, but uh, it should be based on free will of the Flemish people, and it should end. Uh, you, we can be uh, show some financial support, but it has to make sure they get up and make something of their country. Um, and yeah, what the future of Wallonia would be? Yes, I'm a sovereignist. Let them decide by themselves. Okay, okay. Um, I just wanted to finish up on Belgium before we talk about... You want to finish up also with Belgium, so <laughs> well, let's agree I, on that. Um, I should keep my opinions <laughs> out of this, probably. But um, the I I one other um, particularity, as far as your party is concerned, is this so-called cordon sanitaire, which um, I don't know what the equivalent in English would be, but which essentially means that uh, the other parties won't form an alliance with you, and there's also a, a cordon sanitaire, a media called on sanitaire, which means, uh, it, and whereas you have given interviews to some f French language publications, in fact, generally speaking, you don't get a lot of press, especially in, in the South. Is that ending? Is it over? Uh, it's getting more strict in the South than in the North. So in the South, they're getting more radicalized. Communists are on the rise as well. So uh, having a live interview, it's not possible. They even have uh, difficulties posting a photo of uh, members of Flans Belang, so they deny there is a, 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 a Flemish interest in their country. In the north, in Flanders, it exists as well, but not so strict anymore. Of course, if one out of four Flemish people vote Flans Belang, it will be difficult to say we do not exist, but uh, to compare it, I think, uh, on national television, we have three or four percent, percent of the politicians present are members of Flemish interest, although we have 24 percent in opinion polls. Mm. So you feel that's, that's completely wrong, but yeah, um, um, the majority of the journalists in Flanders, in Belgium and the west of Europe, yeah, they're often very uh, biased and uh, left-wing. And uh, but though obviously you've been very successful online, social media, I guess this is the way you get around that kind of... Yes, it's a, a bit of, a, of necessity. Uh, because we have no alternatives. We're not allowed to uh, make advertisement in classic media, in newspapers. We're not uh, very uh, well uh, active in national television. So we found a way around. On the other hand, um, it's uh, the medium, social media. The success is not the medium. Success is the message. If we have a crappy message, you can put it on social media as much as you want. It will not have any uh, traction. So I do think the success of Flans Belang and Flemish interest is, of course, the, the ideas and there's nothing uh, so strong as a good idea at the right time. Okay, let's move on to part two, which is the European Union. And I want to talk about, I know migration is a big issue in Belgium as well, but it's also a European issue. Now, you're uh, the MEPs, the Euro MPs from Flemish interests sit in the Identity and Democracy Group in the European Parliament. Um, you're Eurosceptic, is that fair? What is the position of your party on the future of the European Union? Well, we think, actually, we want to return to the, the Treaty of Maastricht, where I think uh, our party thinks um, economic cooperation is a good thing. Uh, getting away borders to, uh, uh, for your uh, uh, stimulant of your economy is a good thing. Everything that happened afterward was more political union and the loss of national sovereignty. 
without any democratic um, signal or uh, of the of the European people. So therefore, our, po our position is quite clear. We want less European Union, not more. And therefore, we want to reform the European Union. Uh, and that's our clear position because Euro, f uh, Euro uh, fans like Kiefer Hofstadt and so on, they're uh, always the same. If it goes terribly good with our continent Europe, uh, they shout, we need more European Union. When it goes terribly bad with our continent Europe, they shout, we need more European Union. There's no uh, solution but always more European Union. And parties like ours, Flemish Interest, but also in France, in Germany, in the Netherlands, we want less European Union. But how can you achieve that? If you look at the history of the European Union, it's one direction. It's true. More European Union is the direction. Yes, it's true. But European skeptical parties uh, are in the rise in the whole of uh, Europe. And we see that when you get uh, uh, state leaders or uh, state leaders who can say their veto, we see what the role was from Poland, we see what the role was in Hungary, Mr. Orban, quite a bit disappointed with Meloni, they should be a bit more firmer, uh, I must say. Uh, there are opportunities there. And I do think uh, there, the European elections are very important, therefore, that our group would grow and it also would have some effect on our national elections. So we could change governments and governments who... Uh, do care about democracy and sovereignty. So you're betting a lot on these elections, essentially? Yeah. Yes, of course. Right. We're well aware as well the European Parliament is one aspect. Right. Getting in the Council of Europe, it's also very important. Right, right. Okay, okay. Can we talk about migration, immigration? Of course, you can always talk about right. migration thought, with uh, Flemish interest. Mind. I thought you wouldn't mind. Now, this is both a Belgian issue and, and an EU issue. What is your position? We think you never solve a problem by making that problem bigger. We know we have a lot of problems with mass immigration concerning healthcare, concerning security, concerning education. So we think you should stop mass immigration and try to limit it as much as possible. So we need a paradigm shift. It's quite, it's very difficult to explain in all the aspects, but you can put it in four big uh, topics. First of all, uh, refugees should be taken care of in their own region. It's quite strange that if you're fleeing from a, con uh, a conflict, you suddenly arrive in Norway. <laughs> it's quite strange. We all, we all know there were two big wars in European continent. We didn't flee to Austria, uh, to, to Australia, my mistake. We fled to neighboring countries or another region. So, paradigm shift, um, refugees should try to uh, stay in their own region where there's no fighting. Second of all, we need, the European border should be uh, secured. We need a fortress Europe with pushbacks. Illegal immigration is a no-go. Then you need, again, control over your national borders on a modern way, not with uh, a fence or something, but with cameras checking. And the fourth uh, important thing is, once you're at the end of your procedure as an immigrant and you're not allowed to stay, then, you're re then with force you need to go back if you don't want to do it voluntarily. Returns for unsuccessful applicants. But for in Belgium, we're a quite small country, but the estima estimations are that more than 200,000 illegal immigrants are, at I are in our country, which is immense. Right. Now, I think uh, over the last few years in particular, these talk, these ideas have become a bit more mainstream, haven't they? But there is still one sensitive area, you correct me if I'm wrong, and that is the re-migration or, or uh, forced re-migration, as in get rid of people who, who are already here. What's your position on that? Our points as Flans Belang are very clear. We want to stop mass immigration, but with the people who are already in our country, we'll build the Flanders of tomorrow. Couldn't care which skin color they are or which uh, roots they have. Mm. If you're black, purple, uh, white, yellow, couldn't care less. But with three uh, groups, we do not make uh, uh, the Flanders of tomorrow. If you only came here to uh, get involved with crime, you can go back. If you only came here to profit of our social security and not work, we don't build the Flanders of tomorrow with you. And when you're here to implement an extreme form of Islam, where you think that women are less worth than men or gay people should be thrown off of buildings, we don't make the Flanders of tomorrow. Then you should leave our country. Um, 
they were, were actually they should not actually enter and then the people who should be forced to leave or people at the end of the procedure when there are no alternatives when a judge says now it ends you should leave hmm. then you should leave but and what about the people who have these ideas of, about women for example who are already in flanders it's very difficult it's the the lack of democracy we have uh, we could say that if you're uh, implying uh, for um, violence, I think we should um, retake their uh, nationality if it was given to them as uh, as a not really a gift, but what's the correct word? As a privilege. Or yes. Okay, so in certain circumstances, then you would be in favor of withdrawing for Belgian example, or Flemish nationality. For example, a person came here, got a nationality, mm. and it's serious crime. Then. A part of the punishment could be you lose your Belgium nationality and you go back. Okay, I mean, I, I bring this up because this is a very delicate subject. Uh, I talk about popula popula population replacement theory. I mean, I, also one of your party members, can I pronounce his name correctly, Tom van den Driesche. Fluently. Oh, <laughs> thank you, is being investigated correct by the Flemish parliament after talking even about these subjects. What's going on there? Uh, I do not think it's by the Flemish Parliament. I think it's the European Parliament because he said something about. I'm not quite uh, well uh, aware of it. Uh, there was a statement of a European commissionary who said because of the demographics we need more migration. Ah, At the yes. moment we have yes. 3.5 uh, million immigrants each year to European to the European Union. We need a million more. Yeah, of course, that's a big problem. Uh, and I do not believe that uh, the replacement is a big theory of a big plan. That's not, it's not that. It's not some people sit on the table. How are you going to replace European culture and European people? That's not uh, the fact. But if you walk the streets in Brussels, you will see that the European population is changed. It's not a theory. It's not a big evil master plan. It's the reality. And uh, I personally, I do not use the word too often, the, the great replacement, because you get that uh, negative connotation. Uh, it's the same what the left-wing people say, the great diversity. or And yes, we have problems with that. We do think migration can have a positive effect, but it should be limited and mass immigration is terrible. Okay, but so you do agree that Europe does need a certain amount of migrants? The thing is, uh, zero migration is impossible. It's uh, high educated migra migrants who stay for a limited of time. It's uh, an economical benefit. Uh, if you find the love of your life in another continent, of course. But we see that the mass immigration we're confronted with are two big uh, gates where they come through. Asylum seekers, who are actually uh, fortune seekers. They uh, abuse a beautiful humanitarian system with asylum. And the other is um, family reunion. Think that's a yeah, 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 yeah. Once you get your papers here, you can bring over right. your children, your right. wife, right. your uncle, your grandmother. Uh, and I think that's not the best uh, policy they have. Okay. Now, if I want to sort of put together the two sections of our little chat here, you believe that, uh, that Belgium is not reformable, mm -hmm. but you believe the European Union is reformable. It, yeah? Isn't that a bit of a contradiction? Uh, uh, it's quite correct what you say. That if you're uh, consequent in what you say, it could be the split of the European Union could have some benefits. But then you lose the aspect of economic cooperation. And uh, Flanders is a small country, we're an open economy. It would hurt us economically very hard. So therefore we want some European Union as little as possible for economical uh, benefits. Right, now uh, what do you think incidentally about what's happening in the Netherlands? Obviously we have uh, Mr. Wilders now who's uh, trying to put together a, a right-wing uh, government but he's struggling. Um, is did there are there any parallels between Belgium and the Netherlands? I think there are quite a lot. Uh, we see that there are parties, new parties, who are very in favor of it. You have uh, the Farmers Party. It's a new party. Uh, PVV is quite a new party. When he's struggling here at Wilders, it's always with the old traditional parties. It's uh, hard to lose their habits, to start in little political games and uh, little annoying things. 
And yeah, it's not, and they, they forgot what the signal was of, of the population, what they voted for. So um, even if we would get into the position to negotiate a government, it will not be a walk in the park. We're quite aware of it. I thought Marine Le Pen explained it like this. The whole system, it doesn't function. Nothing functions, but they're very good in defending their own interests. And that's what Geert Wilders is confronted with and a lot of other nationalist parties in Europe who got into power. But of course, yeah, you, if you have the ambition to get into power, it's not a walk in the park, so you have to deal with it. And that is your ambition? You're prepared to enter power in Flanders and in Belgium? Uh, in Belgium, it will be very difficult because the French, with your French talking part, refuses in, in, in the government. Uh, but it's my ambition. I truly believe that in uh, the evolution of, of, of in, in, in Europe, you see three phases of, of nationalist parties. The first phase is the nationalistic opposition. And you know that it's uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen in France, it's uh, Bossi in Italy, uh, and they're quite firm. It's like a, a new product on the market. You have to find your place. Uh, not always very tactical and it had some <laughs> image problems. Then you get the second phase where you get the copycats. In France you had Sarkozy who said I will clean the streets with my uh, uh, with water uh, uh, it was. You have in Italy you had Berlusconi. There are some conservatives who have a bit the same talk but uh, fundamentally it doesn't change things. And I truly believe for nationalistic parties like ours, for the ID group, we're entering a third phase where we say we want to take a responsibility and we evolve from a nationalistic opposition party to nationalistic um, government parties. Or at least we pronounce the will that we want to Okay, so the Flemish Interest Party is looking to enter government in Flanders then? Yes. Okay, and that would have to be with the... NBA. Uh, I would not exclude other parties in advance. I will not do what the other parties did do to us, but we have to be honest. Yeah, it's uh, ideologically, yeah, they're F Flemish nationalists and we're Flemish nationalists. Right. So it would be quite strange if you couldn't find a common ground. Mo it, it will be easier with uh, uh, common patriots uh, to find something than with socialists, for example. Even if relations between the two parties, between Flemish interest and the NV, are not always good. Correct? Of course, but that's what the whole thing is. Fights within family are always a bit firmer than without the family. That's, that's true. That's true. That, that's great. I appreciate your time, uh, Tom. Uh, thanks, thanks for very having me. much for coming in. And please come in again after the election. Maybe I could leave you with just one. It's difficult to predict, but have a go. What, <laughs> <laughs> what percentage do you think you'll get? Come on, have a go. What are uh, you at at the polls at the moment? Wow, what, what 24, 25. 24, 25 percent. I cannot generally tell you because I'm a bit of pessimistic from my uh, personality, so I, I, I'm not allowed to say my, my guess. Second of all, uh, when I took over the party, I was 27 years old and we only had 5.9 percent of the votes. Politics, it can go so quickly. We have three months to go, more than three months to go. It's like uh, 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 like it ages in political terms, so I will not make any prediction. One vote extra makes me already a happy man. Tom van Grieken, thank you again for coming. Thanks for having me.